Hi, I'm Hudson Hooten with the Only One Video Show, and I'll be talking to you about the cold desert biomes. Let's go! One more kick should do this trick. Cold deserts have snow, ice, or fog as precipitation, and they're at high elevations with little life. This is what a cold desert looks like. Yeah! 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 Woo! This is where cold deserts are. The temperature in the winter ranges from 28.4 Fahrenheit to 39 degrees Fahrenheit, and in the summer, it's an average of 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The precipitation is snow, icy hail, and fog. Some extremes in the Gobi slash Taklamakan desert temperature is as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter and as high as 113 Fahrenheit in the summer. Salt flats are one of the most common landforms in the cold desert. If you go to the cold desert in Antarctica, you can see this swagon penguin. I'll also be talking to you about the adaptations and other things about the penguin. This little guy has adapted blubber for warmth, wings being flippers for the water, and solid bones for flotation. It mainly chills out in wet areas in Antarctica. It's about 21 inches to 44 inches, but it does have some threats. Fluctuation in the food availability and predators like leopard seals. Huh, that's me. So who wants to hear about my adaptations and threats? <laughs> Nobody cares! Anyway, the gazelle has adapted to cold deserts as well. Like how it has babies at the same time of the year, so they survive because of safety in numbers against all the predators in the Gobi Desert. Some of those predators are wolves, domestic dogs, and coyotes. The gazelle is two to three feet tall. The next animal is the snow leopard, which has adapted to have well-developed chests that help them breathe thin air in this cold desert, and they have an enlarged nasal cavity for air that gets warmed up before it gets to the lung. Our last adaptation for this little guy is that he has well-developed flat feet that act like snowshoes. The cold deserts that they hang out in are in Central Asia. These guys are three feet tall, and their threats are that they are hunted for fur trade, and their bones are used in Asian medicine, which is really sad. Cacti are good at finding and storing water because of their shallow and widely spread roots, which same goes for all the other plants, and animals eat and get moisture from it. Sagebrush, like the cacti, are good at finding and storing water for the same reason, and animals eat sagebrush. Various grasses are also in the cold desert, they, like all the other plants, are good at finding and storing water for the same reason, which is really useful in a desert. And the way that animals depend on these grasses are getting shelter from them. Here's a food web of some of the plants and animals. As for the future of the cold desert biome, I think that global warming is making it hard for the animals and plants that are already adapted to the cold to live. People are not helping and it will get worse. Electric cars and taxes against greenhouse gases would probably help. The conversion of desert to agriculture or for livestock graving is another human impact, along with global warming heating up cold areas. Also, overfishing is reducing food sources. But there are some good human impacts, like U.S. wildlife management agencies seeking to preserve deserts. <laughs> For more videos from the Only One Video Show, go to 1-800-ONLY-ONE-VIDEO, this is not a real website slash phone, .com, .org, .gov, .net. Caller, search now!